Rockstar Games have made some major mistakes in the last 10 years. Mistakes that ruined their reputation, put their users' safety in jeopardy, and much more. All of these mistakes have one thing in common. They were avoidable. So TGG and I put together a vast, comprehensive list, a guide for what not to do in the next GTA. Number 1. Shark cards. We absolutely, 100% do not want shark cards in the next GTA. If the game has a money system where players can earn money to buy things, that system needs to be isolated from real life currencies. Pay to win is no fun. It's not something that the leading video game in the industry needs to promote and survive off of. It's not a free game. If you have to include shark cards, they should only be able to be spent on cosmetic items, cosmetic types of content, content that could be seen in apartments or car liveries. Shark cards cards are the reason the GTA franchise took a 10-year hiatus. Never forget this, and never let Rockstar live it down. Number 2, GTA Plus. GTA Plus is Rockstar's attempt at robbing you blind. <coughs> Sorry, something got caught in my throat. What I meant to say was GTA Plus is Rockstar's way of giving you exclusive membership content. It's pretty difficult to put into words how disgusted I am, how depressed I am. In all seriousness though, this subscription model was something that was clearly pushed by the higher ups at Take-Two Interactive. And it's a test to see how much money they can actually make out of something like GTA Online as a test run to see what they can get away with in their next live service game, aka GTA 6 and GTA 6 Online. An interesting side note though, the service really doesn't offer that much inside of GTA Online itself. In fact, to make it more worthwhile, Rockstar had to remove a big chunk of vehicles so that they could put them inside the Vinewood Car Club, which is now locked behind GTA+. That's right, they took vehicles away from every other player so that they could give them to GTA Plus members occasionally. They also upgraded the service to now provide access to a rotating selection of full Rockstar games. Number 3. Futuristic Stuff Rockstar Games went off the deep end in GTA 5. Realism and immersion played second fiddle to bombastic content. Flying cars and motorcycles sealed GTA Online's fate as something to no longer take seriously. The next GTA needs to have some self-awareness and hold itself accountable to the lore and world setting. If it takes place in current, modern day, then there probably shouldn't be flying vehicles. But that's just my opinion. I feel like flying vehicles have their place in the form of helicopters or planes, but futuristic flying gravity vehicles or gravity guns honestly have no place in these universes. And yes, I know that GTA San Andreas had a jetpack. At least it burned fuel to fly, much like a jet engine. It didn't fly thanks to magic. Introducing the Oppressor Mark III, designed with the future in mind. The Mark III features multiple transformable rocket sentries that fold away neatly. Flying is so five years ago. Take to the stars and the Mark III with our patented dome slider, which you can enjoy the view while you drop bombs from above. The Oppressor Mark III. You haven't seen true oppression. Number 4. Single Player Expansions and DLC This is a no-brainer for me. The next GTA should definitely do a lot more than just multiplayer content. We saw how that went with GTA Online. It got progressively more and more ridiculous until nothing really made sense. We started off robbing convenience stores, but that quickly changed to saving the world from missile silos and breaching private islands from your own personal submarine. Over the top is not always the best, and in GTA Online's case, it cheapened the overall feel of the game. Why? Well, because all of this unbelievable stuff, these world crises, these military level events, satellites bombing the city from space, all of that's on a single island, in a single city in America. It felt too large scale for something so small scale. For a lot of players, single player content is more engaging. It can easily tell more authentic stories. It feels more real, less cheap. Give us stories with characters we can connect with, not goofy stories with characters who can't speak. Number five, 
Servers, no more peer-to-peer. -peer. GTA 5 is dated, so that shows when you look at how the online systems function. You're not connecting to a server when you play GTA Online. In fact, you're just connecting to other players. Who's hosting the game? One of the players is the host. This is why it's so easy to exploit the game, because it's basically just single player with other players inhabiting your world. As you likely already know, peer-to-peer -peer is also the reason that your safety is at risk when you play GTA Online, which we'll get to later. Number 6. Treat the modding community right. Take-Two Interactive has a history of taking down any community mods. This typically stops the fanbase from enjoying anything new or fresh. They've even sent private investigators to modders' houses, telling them to stop creating mods. The community fought back when Take-Two did this to Open 4. Steam's GTA 5 store page was review-bombed because they tried shutting down Open 4. Going forward, Rockstar and Take-Two need to get more on board with community mods. CFX.RE, the team behind the role-playing and creator communities 5M and Red M are now officially part of Rockstar Games, so we'll see where this leads in the future. RP servers are a great getaway from the typical GTA Online grind. If Rockstar and Take-Two would back off, we would have been able to see massive RP servers where modders merged Los Santos and Liberty City into the same map. RP servers offer a huge range of new player experiences and gameplay loops. Hopefully, in the future, Rockstar gives more creative freedom to these servers to operate. Have you, or someone you know, been harassed? by a Take-Two representative. I was minding my own business, when all of a sudden, a private detective came to my house for making GTA mods. You don't have to take their mistreatment. I'm Kenny Law, and I can represent you in your legal case. Reach out to us with your case at 420-420-6969. If a Take-Two private investigator ever hands you a phone, hand them one of your own with us on the line. War Thunder made this video possible by sponsoring it. War Thunder is a vehicle combat game that offers more than 2,000 vehicles to fight with, like tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships. The best part is, you can download and play the game for free. The game features intense PvP battles at various modes to accommodate different players' playstyles. Vehicles are detailed down to their individual components, and these vehicles can be customized as well. The game looks great, especially in 4K, with awesome locations and graphics. I personally love the destruction you can cause to enemy vehicles. War Thunder is available on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, and more. Play War Thunder now and register using my link in the description to receive a huge free bonus pack which includes multiple premium vehicles, premium account boosters, and much more. Number 7. Map Expansions The only thing more claustrophobic than a single city on an island with a mountain is a single city on an island with a mountain for 10 years straight. We need map expansions. That keeps the game fresh, it keeps it alive, it makes it feel bigger, and gives players a reason to keep coming back. This is why games like Fortnite update their map regularly. They stay active and fresh year-round. I don't care what it takes. We can pay for these city expansions or we can get them for free with some sort of implemented battle pass system, just make it so the next GTA map isn't the last GTA map I'll ever see in my lifetime. Number 8. Vehicle Damage Rockstar really downgraded vehicle damage in GTA 5. GTA 4 did it so well, you could practically flatten a car if you smashed it enough times. The next GTA needs to fix this issue and reinstate itself as the pinnacle of car damage in video games. As it currently stands, BeamNG has the best soft body damage physics in a video game, and Rockstar needs to catch up. It's pretty lame when you crash into a wall at top speed and the car is slightly dented and your character doesn't fly out the windshield. Number 9. Euphoria Physics Another example of one of the biggest series downgrades in gaming history is what Rockstar did to Euphoria Physics. In GTA 4, you could push NPCs out of your way or down a set of stairs. I would always push NPCs off the ledge and broker because it didn't have railing. and free-falling was more realistic. It wasn't some animation loop. Also, jumping out of your car was one of the best things to do with Euphoria, as you'd skip, flip, and fling into the ground, objects, and other cars, even damaging them with your body. Rockstar needs to bring Euphoria physics back fully intact. The world will be a better place if they do. Every time I jump, I fall headfirst into the ground. My kids keep telling me I'm drunk. Mom, you're an alcoholic. Ma'am, do you need me to call you a taxi? No. Tired of face planting like a failed gymnast? Upgrade to Euphoria Physics, where stumbling becomes a spectacular dance. Wow, Mom, you're killing it! 
Why face plant when you can foxtrot? Do not take euphoria if you are suffering from diabetes, are pregnant, are planning to become pregnant, or drink water on weekdays. Stumble into a better way of life. The euphoria way. I need a drink. Number 10, no removal of existing content. Speaking of removing perfectly good content, Rockstar removed hundreds of cars from GTA Online for no reason. But newsflash, just between us, it wasn't for no reason. It was for GTA Plus. Their excuse was to declutter the website, which is obviously dumb, just fix your AI or do nothing. The correct solution will never be just remove heaps of content, because for whatever reason, you don't want to do the real work. Number 11, anti-modders slash security. The GTA online economy never felt like something worth investing my time in because every time I got on, a modder would spawn bags of cash on me. Why would I want to earn money in a game that was, first of all, extremely grindy, but second of all, had worthless money? Money. Give us a reason to want to earn money. That reason? A reliable, safe, steady economy. That also means you probably shouldn't carry over any money from GTA 5 to 6. Leave GTA 5 in the dust. Move on. Also, it's probably a good idea to invest in anti-modding security when your user's safety is at risk. If you didn't already know, when you play GTA Online on any platform without a VPN, modders have easy access to your IP address, which hurts your privacy. Using this information, any kid with a laptop could take your internet down with a DDoS attack. Just do a power cycle on your modem if this happens to you. It will most likely change your IP address. Number 12, better combat. The combat in GTA 5 was pretty pathetic. A downgrade from GTA 4 for sure. GTA 4 had much more strategy to its fighting mechanic with blocking, dodging, and counterattacks. They even centered an entire mini game around it with the Ballad of Gay Tony. Number 13, driving physics. A small minority of people like the driving physics in GTA 4. I'm in that minority. In fact, when I first played GTA 5, I was immediately bummed out when I noticed the driving physics got nerfed. They took a much more arcade-like approach. I understand that people think the GTA 4 driving felt like you were driving a boat, but GTA 5 driving feels like Hot Wheels, and all the cars essentially drive exactly the same. A happy medium should be found next time around. Two big things I never want to see in a GTA game again, I don't want to be able to rotate my car in the air, and I don't want to flip my car over if it's stuck magically. These are things that make the game feel childish. If you flipped your car over in previous GTA games, you had to get out and find a new one. It sucked, but that's what happens when you flip a car over. It gets stuck. Also, the next GTA needs to make the cars feel heavy again. Currently, vehicles do not feel like they have any weight to them. But in GTA 4, vehicles felt heavy, and you fought that weight when slamming on the brakes or making turns. Vehicles are massive heaps of steel. They shouldn't feel like lightweight plastic toys. Number 14, more enterable buildings. I made a video about fully enterable buildings in gaming. We need more games to start doing this. As it currently stands, most buildings are entirely faked. They're just empty shells void of anything meaningful. Interestingly, GTA Online regressed to the San Andreas way of doing building interiors. They went backwards. In GTA 4 and 5, you could walk directly into building interiors, but in GTA Online, you enter a loading screen and respawn into the building. The next GTA needs to eliminate any and all loading screens once you're in the game. They should also push to make as many buildings enterable as possible. Number 15, Graphics. GTA 5's graphics are dated. The game was built from 2008 to 2013, and the graphics have been incrementally updated through each release. Current gen consoles are the only platforms that have access to ray tracing as well. PC does not have access to ray tracing despite being the superior hardware platform. The next GTA should include ray tracing across all platforms on release. Red Dead Redemption 2 is the best looking video game I've ever seen. The environment, the clouds, the lighting are all unmatched, and this was built from 2013 13 to 18. If Red Dead 2 is anything to go off of, the next GTA will undoubtedly be one of the best looking games ever made. When the leaks happened, tons of people freaked out and said the game looked bad. The leaks are nothing to go off of. What we saw was not the polish stage. That comes later. This is like putting the icing on the cake when it hasn't even been baked yet. It's just a mix. Let's take a pause from the first 15 things Rockstar Games needs to get right with GTA 6. If this video is successful, we will continue it with another 15 things Rockstar Games needs to fix. We've only scratched the surface. Can you think of anything else Rockstar should do for GTA 6? Let us know in the comments below. I'm sure our list could use your feedback and suggestions, and your suggestions will be displayed on screen in the next video. Do you want to be a voice in one of my videos? In this video, you could have voiced one of the parody ads.
In order to do so, DM me on Discord and let me know that you're interested in voice acting for a future video. You can find my server link in the description, and it's pretty easy to get a hold of me, not many people will DM me, I bet. You should also check out TGG's channel, he covers all things GTA, and he covers it thoroughly, and most importantly, honestly. GTA 6 is right around the corner. This Friday marks the beginning of that 10-day window Sam Hauser announced for the GTA 6 trailer. That means it's time to get active. I'll be making videos analyzing whatever we see in the trailer lore, characters, locations, and more. Whatever's there, we'll look into it. Join my Discord and analyze the trailer with me. Help me find details and get credited for doing so. The more things we can find, the more we can expose and people will be happy to see them. Click the bell icon if you want and you can be up to date when that video comes out. In the meantime, check out my Future of Games series. I have three videos in the series up now and each one covers a different aspect of where games could be headed in the future. Fully enterable buildings and fully destructive environments are the most popular, so go check them out. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget, you can play War Thunder on your platform of choice and register using the link in my description to get those free bonuses. You don't want to miss out on the free, intense vehicle action that only War Thunder can offer.